The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best, juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat in four sides. Mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corner beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family bbq.com for more info uh steve Byrne is here cb live at desert ridge is where the young man and of course uh you've been on, coming on the show for a long time i didn't even know yeah uh, you had a loyalty like this that you would wear such a thing but you come in here this morning after my hour-long uh you know uh, dissertation my rant the whole thing about a uh, fandom and sports and how you can steal away the, the linchpin, the, the Mr. Cub 2.0, sure. a guy who was almost guaranteed to be a statue outside of Wrigley Field. Think of that. Yeah. Almost guaranteed to do it, and now he's in Yankees. And race. here comes this yeah. peacock walking yeah. down the hallway. Yeah, and then you peacock. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. What are we doing? And you acted it's like. It's force radio. You, it's coming. Yeah, you acted like. cool? <laughs> you did it. You know. son of a. <laughs> Here's my prediction now that Steve Byrne has done this, is that this will be, uh, this, this, you are the second to last act at a comedy club here in town before it all shuts down before again because of the Epsilon. Down, yeah. The Epsilon COVID's coming. I'm the Wuhan bat. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> it. We've brought you in. in. Yeah, because this is just everything. code for me to say it's all about to shut down again because that's the only good thing that can happen now is right. that baseball has to shut its door because I don't want to watch Rizzo go running off in, in New York and and celebrate. Ah, And I hope they don't, by the way. This is, this is almost like your notebook. <laughs> well, that's what we were saying this morning. Yeah. A, a woman... Doesn't like sports. <laughs> yeah, no, look, you're not even gonna get a word in today. A woman doesn't like. This has been my theory for a long yeah. time. Doesn't like sports a lot of the times because they see what a man in love actually looks like, <laughs> and we don't do that with them. Right. We and it's sad to say it's yeah. not correct. Our loyalties towards sports, right, are bigger than. Our friendships and our, rela- and our emotional, yes. yes, and it's true. It's a different loyalty. It's a well. Sometimes it's just not, and some it's weird. I have a friend who's a, a comic from Cleveland named Ryan Dalton, and he cried when the Cavs won. Yeah, and his wife was happy for him, but she's like, you know, he's like, what? She's How like, many things so, have I done? You, uh, you didn't cry on our wedding day. Nope. Yeah. Like, different. Not as big well, a deal. Well, I did, but I don't want to talk about that. Here's the, thing, yeah. here's, the, here's the thing about the wedding, and this is my first thought that popped in my head is I would have said to her, I'm like, I can have another wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> this may never happen again. <laughs> That's a man's sports Game, mind. Set, yeah, match. when we're in sports mode, don't talk to me about love. This yeah. is what love looks like. It's, it's sad. Yeah, like there's a, a picture in my home mm-hmm. of Anthony Rizzo. Right. Uh, in a prom pose with my wife. <laughs> and it's blown up. And he signed it. And Here, I said yeah. yesterday, I'm like, we got to take that down. She goes, why? I'm still in it. I'm like, I didn't ask you to autograph it. <laughs> it's going in the closet now. He's a Yankee. It's not happening. It's terrifying. So, it's you, worst. so this goes deeper, though. Do you have a hatred for the Yankees then? Um, I don't like any teams that aren't the Cubs. I, like, my sports loyalty lies like the Steelers are the team I love in football. Right. And the rest of them can go eat it. Right. I, I don't yeah. have I don't have a second favorite. I, I I have teams I hate more than others. The Yankees are I'm an American League thing. Yeah. I don't like the evil empire like most. I will root against the Yankees in most cases. Right. Now I just now it's just they took my statue, man. They, they took, took my guy. You saw the office here. I got an autographed Rizzo jersey. Uh, it's just it's it's over. How long is that staying up? It's gone tomorrow. Is it? I'm going to donate <laughs> it to a charity. Come on. Oh yeah, it's gone. Come on. That's gone. No, you can't. What? That's yeah, wrong. Throw, off. Why? throw them off. Give it time. What do you mean? Give it time. Uh-uh. You, you had a nasty. No, you have up. to knee jerk you know these what? moments. You're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> these moments require knee jerk reactions. You don't know that how it works. Later in life, you call and beg for it back, just I, like women. This, this, like if it was the '80s, you'd have the uh, jersey toss. You'd be like, meet me at the 95 yep. bridge. I'm gonna light this thing on fire. We're gonna drop it in the, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, the Tempe Town Lake. I think you gotta. I think you gotta just take a breather. Nope. He's still a good guy. Sure, but he's in a, that that hanging on the wall in there is. Uh, it doesn't. It's like it, having an extra it, it friend on the wall. To a moment in time, it right. gave you what I you wanted. I still have that. Yeah, just 
But now I got to watch him do something with the, like watching your ex uh, bang a guy and go that yeah, used to be mine. Happens. I got pictures of it all over the house. So looking at the pictures like being a cuck then. What would it yeah. be? Would you <laughs> be all right then? I mean, like I guess the equivalent would be like Crosby. If he goes, don't go to there. If Sydney's a capital, oh. he do this to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't okay. you dare. <laughs> Sydney you're Crosby, now, you're now we're hitting your hockey. <laughs> Sid the kid, you probably have an '87 folded jersey and some sort of shadow box uh-huh. in your house. Yeah, of course, uh-huh. and it's autographed. And yeah. but you've got three cups with him. He needs to stay there forever. Yeah, you want him to retire to right. To but let's say he goes, to... no more. I don't want to rebuild with this team. I got one one last shot. I want a chance. Look, if... And they trade him to Tampa. Right, right. You don't want that. No, no one wants it would kill no you wants to see if you were to end up in no. Florida. No, you want um, him to stay in his house in <laughs> no. Fox Chapel and just you know call it a day. <laughs> Unless, of course, your hero's Jewish. He's going to end up in Florida anyway. In the latter years, at some point. Yeah, yeah. Right. In um, Boca. Yeah, going to Boca. I, I think like though like if I was an Oiler fan, right? Right. And Gretzky brought me four cups, and then he goes to the Blues, he goes to the Kings, right. he goes to the Rangers. It's like I I wouldn't take. An uh, 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 autographed Oilers jersey down. I, w- I would still be thankful that part of the legacy, part of the greatest player to ever play the game, played. That's kind of like how I have that one up there in our office. Of Gretzky with the Rangers. Yeah. Ugh. It's still. I, 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 he again, retired a Ranger. He still kept. He, he still did he get a cup of the Rangers? He wasn't there with them. No, 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 no. They didn't. No, Messier and. and they, that was they the had, team. They, Gardner they had a run. Yeah. Messier and all those guys were. They brought all those guys back. But you know what happens when they go to the Yankees? Nothing. That's true. Nothing. And even when they when they get it, if they win the World Series, it's almost kind of like not legitimized because it's almost like they paid for it. Yeah, but they Tom Brady as a Buccaneer is tough for like because I can't because I've been all over I've been all over people for like cheer Patriots fans who cheer for the Bucks. Oh, like, right. that's rough. I that's played you the Matt Damon. Matt Damon, who's like I'm a Brady fan first, and he's just pissing off all. I mean, like, and he you, said so in the you Buccaneers. You ride or die. Like, Go Bucks! It makes your loyalties. Oh. It makes your loyalties questionable as a fan, as know, a you, man, <laughs> a man, Steve Byrne, as a man. Didn't you wear a pirate I leave hat? A lot of hair on the show. Yeah, on Sullivan oh, and Son. Man. Weren't you wearing pirates hats on that show? On, Didn't on you have what? pirates gear on your TV show? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, all through the Pittsburgh bar. It was yeah, all, it was all garbage lies. It's all. Oh, it's all. <laughs> it's all it's, the veil is lifted, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sullivan and lies. Take, take, yeah, that's exactly what yeah. it was. I love the Bucks, by the way. Let's talk about the Milwaukee Bucks. I am a huge <laughs> fan. <laughs> they just won, right? <laughs> love them. Love them. You I'm going to wear them after the show to, to get out. For yeah, you know, what I feel bad about right now. My shoes are. Antetokounmpo's. I wear Gianna Santo. They're great shoes. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Nike uh, freak shoes, and I feel right. a little bit guilty about that. So you really like this. It's not like you're not doing this for it. You like legitimately are pretty oh, it's, darn bummed. It's, you, you come to my house and take a look at a Cubs uh, wall. I built a sports bar at my house. Just, it, it just sounds to hang like stuff. you're going to end up on Dateline killing I, this guy. No question. No, not Anthony Rizzo. <laughs> like maybe the fan maybe wearing the his skin. Look yeah. out to narrow. Uh, I would <laughs> yes, wear a skin. Right. <laughs> well, I interviewed him two times for this thing. Yeah. As a, as a Super Cub fan, uh, spring training comes around, and then the second year he's like, let's do that again for this product he endorses. And, oh, asked, and asked for me, and I said, you know that makes us best friends. And joking around, he goes, yeah. I said, you can't go anywhere. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, I won't. You, and I said this earlier today. That for the ver- I was a person who interviewed him and introduced him as the Chicago Cubs' uh, first, first world champion first baseman since Frank Chance. Right. 1908. Wow. And I'm like, that's something to us. That's is, something yeah. to us. And now he's like, ah, Yankees. Yankees. I asked for a trade. I got to try and go to the Yankees. He's like, what a pay would back you, then. Would you, you man. have been happier if he went to a smaller market team or because it's no. even just He yeah. needs to stay a Cub. See, I, I agree with you understanding the, you know, what a championship means to the city yes. of Chicago. Because I was living in Chicago when they won their second Cup. And oh, yeah. the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And, and just seeing how Chicago rallies. The how buzz, much the them. vibe. My yeah. buddy Dave Boland, uh, who's third line center, you know, shutdown guy. Um, yeah. He won the Cup and he was the only Cub. He was the only uh, uh, Blackhawk to stay in Chicago over the course of the summer. Yeah. And we, we got to know each other quite well. And <laughs> he gets a day with the Cup, right? Which I think is the greatest tradition in, in, in all the sports. Yep. Totally First agree. off, the Stanley Cup looks like a trophy. Like 
the lump, six feet tall. It's huge. The other ones, they look like sales trophies. Right. You know, like yeah. the, the, <laughs> a tea cap. The one you win. <laughs> the one the you win. Basketball ones are the worst. Uh, it's horrible. It looks like the oh, one like we got in Little League. But baseball, it's yeah. like somebody's going to poke their eye out with this thing. Yeah. You can't celebrate with that. Yeah. And then the, the NFL one, it just like like some Merrill Lynch would give out for like a great fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. But like the cup looks like a cup and then there's men holding it up yeah. and you get to go take a victory lap. It was so cool. And you got to do that? No. Oh, you no, were no, part no. of it. No, no. So so uh, Dave, uh, <laughs> Dave, Dave gets the cup, right? And so Rocky Wirtz, the owner of the of the um, of the Blackhawks, says, "Look, Dave, whatever you do, do not take the cup to Wrigley." He's like, "Yeah, I'm not going to take the cup to Wrigley." He's like, "Listen to me, Dave. You do not take the cup to Wrigley." He's like, "I will not take the cup to Wrigley." <laughs> Flash forward, like oh, Ferris Bueller, no. right? Rocky Horse is watching the Cubs game. And there it is. And Bolin is on or one of those rooftops. Yeah. He's, he didn't take it. Oh, he didn't yeah. He did. Yeah. He went to the rooftop. So he's sitting there and he's chugging and he's pounding and he's having the time of his life. And the spectators see it. He's holding the cup. The <laughs> oh, whole no. place goes crazy. The game stops for a second. He had to get a police escort out of Wrigleyville that day. Because the cup was home. Because the cup was oh, home. Yeah. Man. And I just saw, I was like, that's what, that's what it means. It, yeah. it means something it's a different. little more special. The fans are, fans are. We're passionate and emotional. I don't know the players know that as much as they should. Yeah, like there's never like there's never a meeting between owner, GM, agent, and player going. What would the fans need here? What are we going to do to to not crush them? They don't have those talks. It's all business. It's all business. And meanwhile, well, it's not mental for us. health is very prevalent. So let's very talk true. about the fans' I got the, I, mental health. I got people. the twisties. Oh man, okay. did you, you line them up this week? I got the twisties. That's good. Steve went on Instagram this week and uh, made. I, I, Made Losing followers. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Rapidly. Good. We talked about this on the Caliendo cast. You're one of the last ones that's like, come get me. Which, I which is just great. don't care. Yeah. And it isn't about not caring. Well, you don't care about them because you I, have yeah. a right to say what you want and feel so long as it's not malicious and, and awful. Right. And that's exactly what it is. When you get funny. offended yeah. at a joke, grab a box of tissues yeah. and take a lap around. I just don't care. Right. It is a jo- It's gotten so – you can't make a joke. It's like it's not about mental health. It's no. about the situation. It's just a – She walked away from the situation. Yes. I, I personally think it's going to start turning into every time someone has a bad day. They're going to blame mental health, and we won't be able to say. Oh, oh. yeah. So you, you go out there and you get the yips. It's like I got mental health issues, but I'll sit and watch the team from the dugout. I'm just not going to play. And you're going to walk away. If Tom Brady did this in the Super Bowl and said, "I just don't feel it today, Coach. Send me out. I don't feel like playing. It hurt. My, yeah. I got the twisties. My, my head's not in it." You'd be like, "This guy's a mental basket case. We can't trust him." Right. Of course. That's how sports has always been. So sports, it's different. If and firefighters emailed me like crazy saying, "You're right. I can't walk away." <laughs> Because right. it's just not there that I don't day. feel like fighting this fire. Anymore. Mental health is something you're not supposed to. It's not supposed to be an excuse. It's supposed to be a reason. Uh, an excuse is like, I just I can't do it because of this. And that's what bugs me about the Simone Biles thing is we're so quick to say. And you tweeted out something. I don't remember what the joke oh, was. I said I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to write something funny about Simone Biles, but the pressure got to me. <laughs> and people, and man, people here it comes. Yeah. Did you get a good one? Here comes the Did tsunami. You expect that? Yeah. <laughs> what was your what? favorite? Did you expect that? Uh, the I mean, the comics yeah. just Yeah, at this point, in. it's just like, okay. It, even, like, comics. Like, uh, you know, it's so funny because you can see where, like, who liked yeah. your stuff. And, like, the last – over the last year, like, all my comic friends are like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> your <laughs> brand like, liability. Too hot. Too hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like Ovechkin scoring his 50. I can't hold my stick anymore. <laughs> it's just like, ooh. Um, but I, I just think it's, it, it's gotten it's gotten so out of hand because – Unfortunately, everything's tethered politically now. Yep. You know, the minute it happened, I go, I go, the left's going to back her and yep. the right's going to vilify it. Yep. But somewhere in the middle, everybody's going to have a feeling about this. And I'm a father of two. Yep. My daughter's nine. My son is about to turn six. And every time we play hockey, every time they're riding the bike, every time we're doing something physically active, if you fall, what do you do? They go, get back up. I go, don't. And they always say, quit. It's like yeah. it's like repetition. I've drilled this into right. my head. So when my wife was watching the gymnastics, them, I was just like, well, you know, the le- I, I wasn't there that day, but it's like I would have said to my daughter, I go, Livy, don't, and she goes, quit. Yeah. You know? and, there's, and there's something to the idea of saying I'm just not here today, and it's, it's almost more uh, impressive to say I didn't have it, and I went out there and I gave it and my you, best. And you took a roster spot yeah. from somebody else. Yes. You nullified somebody else's yep. dream that somebody, you know, worked their butt off to for yeah. their whole life for that moment. And you took it away from them. So it's yeah. like it's 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 more complicated than on the surface. But I think it's funny because the COVID pendulum of entertainment has swung so far with the Jordan doc. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're all glorifying, wow, what a leader. Right. Look at that. No BS. To now we're coming out of COVID and we're entertained, obviously, with the Olympics. And you see this and it's just like, I, I'd err on the side of caution. I, yeah. I'd, I'd want Jordan in my locker room. I, I, of I course. Would. When it comes to – that's what my point was with this whole thing. The when it German comes, uh, judo coach. Mapping that lady around. Yeah, he hits oh, her he before hit, the oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've said that too. With sports, it's different. With sports, it's totally different. Part of the deal is, yeah, you can have mental health issues. You've got to overcome all of it to be considered the goat. The second she sewed that little goat on her leotard, she announced, I can do anything at any time. Nothing yeah. can stop me. Because I'm the greatest ever. We learned that from Michael Jordan. That documentary was basically like, I didn't care what was going on. Yeah. Fever 104 or whatever. And I still went out and won a championship because I overcome everything. And that's a message to people with mental health issues is that don't let it stop you. It shouldn't shouldn't make you go the other way. Don't quit. Because that particular decision right there will be terrible. Well, I think for a long time. You're seeing the, the, the opposite of that with Conor McGregor. You know, Conor McGregor, he got destroyed. Yep. By Khabib. Again. And then he gets <laughs> beat by Dustin Poirier. Yep. And so you're seeing this invincibility, the swagger coming in. It was like, oh, my God, this guy's great. He's tribal. He's outspoken. But he backs it all up. Right. And then it all kind of fell apart. Now you're seeing this other breakdown in terms of mentality yeah. of, of his changing game, where it's like he's going to places like where his uh, crap talking yeah. crazy is kicks not – yeah, no. on on par with what he was doing before, and it's just like I, I think mentally you're seeing somebody really break down before yeah. our Mike eyes. Tyson. You're talking about DMs and your wife yeah. and all that stuff. It's like before it was fun, it was creative, it was like yeah. it was a bravado behind it, creativity. Yeah. That when he was doing the press conferences, that press conference weigh in tour with yeah. uh, Mayweather and, and the one in Toronto. That was one of the most entertaining, almost like roast battles. Yeah. Yes, I've it was ever unreal. Seen in my life, he was so good. And then you see him get his butt whooped, and then you're seeing this mental spiral go yeah. down a different path. It's like, ugh. Well, I think you're seeing the act get revealed. Like with yeah, Tyson. Yeah. Tyson was all extent, show. Yeah. We, I, I've often said that I think Mike Tyson is the overrated heavyweight fighter of all time. He never beat anybody good. Ever. He didn't. Uh, yeah. you, look at the, you look at his record. Yeah. Like, he lost to everybody. The difference between Ali, Foreman, all the You wouldn't know that great. at the time because he yeah, was just would. a beast. Well, because he was beating him so badly average, so quick. But so, I mean, uh, but those it was an are act. professional boxers. Sure. Though, but, but to decimate them all, because we remember, look, yeah. uh, I mean, right. we, were, we remember that time and period where he, no BS, comes out in black, doesn't talk, just comes out and Literally within the first round. Yeah. That was the thing. Like, how long is it going to last? How long is it going right. to last? And that was the paper. That was the beginning of pay per view too. Like, yeah. why yeah. am I going to spend that much money to watch, to watch a thirty second fight right. and, and not know the undercard constantly? But yeah. the thing for me, I did not to say he wasn't a good fighter, but he's the most overrated. And the act sold it. Like when he became, you know, Iron Mike, and he right. was the, he was the sweet kid at first, and then he kind of was like this off the hinges guy. Mm-hmm. And then when he became the one that was like, I'm going to eat your children. He's biting off ears and everything else. You started to see that that's a that dude's not home. And right. then he realized that sells tickets because that's the only thing. He was losing fights, and he was still selling sure. tickets. Conor McGregor's the same way. You're Trying losing to reinvent fights. Him He's on his back. creating the hype a little well, bit. Conor's yeah. on his back talking trash. With a broken leg. With a broken leg. And yeah. that's when you're like, oh, this is all in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not real. And I think that's when the, the audience doesn't like to be fooled. We like the game. We'll play the game. We don't like to be fooled. So that's when Conor kind of was that. Yeah, uh, you saw the, 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 we saw the wizard. Yeah, 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 exactly. The curtain was removed. Like, Ew, boy. Yeah. Leave yeah. it to Jake and Logan Paul. They'll handle it. Yeah, that's we'll going to be back the future of sports. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, the pendulum always swing back <laughs> with two <laughs> blonde dudes yeah. from Ohio yeah. with no talent? Well, yeah, I'll go with Marketing? that. Marketing? Yeah, well, they're excellent at that. Yeah. But, I mean, that. you know, they're... It, boxing has never said what we need more of is Nordic What are they looking famous? Bo- I don't even know what they're famous for. Uh, yeah, I don't either. YouTube, you know? I think. Well, no, I mean, well, there, I mean, definitely but... the, the social media thing, but yeah. I don't know what they did makes them so entertaining. I have no idea. I Me mean, neither. There's a ton of those, though. That yeah. McBroom kid, I don't know who that is, but they shut down Beverly Hills because he showed up outside and 40,000 people showed up. And I'm like, really? they had to close Rodeo Drive because there were too many people on it. What is he? You don't know what he did? Okay. Does a podcast. Yeah. And he, he wants to fight other podcasters, which I think is interesting. Like, podcasts, the only way they get notoriety is if they fight each other. Well, they tried stand-up comedy for a while. Yeah, a lot of them. And, oh, uh, really? Learn that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And learn they. I weren't. mean, ask ask anybody that runs a comedy club. They they have these YouTubers come in, at, and they'll do a noon show, and then the show is who knows what it is. But 
there's no show. Right. Like the fans are there. They literally they just want a picture. Yeah. yeah. For val- validation. So weird. With After get That's get through it. your yeah. presentation. Yeah. Let's get yeah. to the picture. So what you're exactly. saying is you... it's the opposite of everything. And I they sell more. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> to do morning radio, yeah, to, work vampire hours to promote a show and get drilled because I got a Yankee hat when I was in Times Square with my son weeks ago, and I'm trying yeah. to huck tickets next to a Journey cover band this yep. weekend. Okay, <laughs> is that happening? Oh, it's at CB Live. It will be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm gonna hear, you're gonna hear. Don't stop believing. Okay, you're gonna hear. Don't stop believing. At least faintly, times. and it's yeah. just annoying enough to make you go. Oh, there's that, and then you can't help it. I was at Melissa Villasenor the other night and watching her do stuff. And uh, she had a quiet moment, and you could hear the band, and they were doing Boston or something. And I started to do that. Mary Ann, walk it away. I'm at the table singing yeah. the thing in the other room. Like, that's what that is, isn't it? Because you're playing Name That Tune in the other room. Right, right. So you have to be really good and keep the crowd Well, th- I think No pausing. Th- this one, though, is actually pretty darn good compared to the other one. Because this one, because at Stand Up Live, you can kind of hear it. Yeah. But at CB Live, they, they like soundproof that weird yeah. accordion. Yeah, that wall is yeah, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Kind of neat. So when they open it up, it's, it's yeah, for sure. But wrong. the key to it is making the audience laugh. And you mentioned that your son was with you in Times Square. I hope your son gets traded to another family. Oh, we went there. That's exactly what my <laughs> love we feels. There. Yeah, you're, that's exactly. I hope that someday. Is Rogan going to interview you? <laughs> yeah, I would hope someday. <laughs> you're just lashing. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm, I'm angry. Your son gets I'm in a corner. Trapped. I'm in a corner. Yeah. And that's, it's the hat. It's the hat. <laughs> you said Times Square. You brought up New York again. You know you're what I'm going to do? I hope your son gets traded to a better family. Mark my words. Mark my words. A year from now, I'll be back. And I'm coming out. Full on pinstripes. I'm going to wear his jersey. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to find his cleats. I'm going to wear his okay. cleats. That's hey fine. guys, what's I'm going, to going on? And you wear a photograph with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I'm all for yeah. that. Yeah, it's just a different animal. Uh, Steve Burns at uh, CB Live at Desert Ridge tonight and tomorrow. You can go to cblive.com and get them. All this other stuff that's going on in the world. Like the, the fun thing about your Instagram was, and I love that. And I don't have social media. I won't get on it, but I get told and. People and Brady let me know about your thing, and I looked into it. Is that uh, I think comedy is going to be the thing that brings that back to middle. I think you guys have an <laughs> unbelievable. I do. I think give it time. Somebody else take credit for it. No, but I'm, like, I think trying to push back. This is it. I think the world of comedy has to be the safe place for everybody because most yeah. of us are normal. Most of take the joke. Most of us can do it, and it's going to be you guys who have your Instagram and have your stuff that has to stop bowing down. So you can finally see yeah. to the stuff. Get over it. To well, that yeah. person that that is all fired up and like right. you know what, what I'm you getting I, I got so much flack for this one you know as a comic it's like I'm getting calls and texts from comics saying you can't say that it's like guys you're the last person that should be yeah, saying this absolutely you, you, beyond it. now now granted the people that are saying it are extremely progressive comics sure in the field of unlikable like being yourself. friends with you know writers on very important. Uh, Late night talk shows, which I'm not going to mention or whatever, you know. And Kimmel. we all know, like, all of them are so left. And yeah. I'm just a comic that, I, I mean, I get I get flack for it in L.A. I get flack for it in New York. But I'm like, it's punk rock to not, like, kowtow to the government. Like, yes. I don't believe Obama as much as I don't believe Trump. Like, I just don't like either of them because they're such full of BS. You guys keep drinking the Kool-Aid yeah. and you keep getting disappointed every four years. It's like, why do you, th- it's an endless we've made cycle. Comedy Just tell political. Joe's to settle down. Yeah. Tell, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but that's the thing. We've made comedy like you have to be left or right to like a guy. And you're oh, like, yeah, like yeah. and that's the crazy part. It's like you're funny or you're not funny. I can watch somebody that says stuff I disagree with if the jokes are good. I don't care. Yeah. like I don't like either of them. That's yeah, the thing. Me too. I just don't like either of them. I think they're probably decent people at the end of the day. But once they get on and they're soapboxing for a side, I think that especially now the divisiveness oh my God. is so out of hand that if you you know tweet or post something that uh, aligns with the right, I, yeah. I, I'm losing followers all the time. Yeah. I'm losing comic friends all the time. I had a friend, a very, very good friend of mine. Name him. Maybe I will. All right, go. I had a good friend of mine. <laughs> Owen Benjamin. Over, well. <laughs> He's my Rizzo. <laughs> he got traded. <laughs> He's to the evil empire. Just play that. To the yeah. dark side. Oh, yeah. To the dark side. Um, <laughs> I still love him. I still love him. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, it's hard to I want to photograph right? with him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but I had a good friend over COVID. He had posted. I had posted something, and he had an issue with it. And then I called him. Because he had texted me, but then he posted something that I was just like, I, I. My point was, I think I thought that the Capitol riots were just as destructive as 
shutting down the city of Chicago for 48 hours, lifting all the drawbridges because BLM was tearing through uh, Michigan Avenue. And I said, to me, the optics are no different. And if anything, I think barnstorming a federal building, I'm shocked it didn't happen earlier because the government was so lax in giving everybody some relief over COVID. And for me, it was like, if it happened over that, I would have been happy. But but I, I was like, I, I just think that they're both as destructive. Yes. And I, I think they're both something- Incorrect ways to handle an issue. Embarrassing, yeah, yes. for the country. Yeah. And he said, he was basically vilifying, you know, the Capitol riots, right. saying, saying, that's horrible. Here's why BLM stuff is justified. Walk me through it. And I was open to hearing him sure. out, right? Now, we got – we were spiraling, and then we got to the point of like, well, who did you vote for last election? And I told him – I said, look, I didn't vote for either candidate. I went and voted, right. but I didn't vote for either candidate because I didn't – Didn't buy into either I one. I didn't buy into either of them. And he absolutely flipped out. He said, I can't even talk to you anymore. I seriously I, – I, I, the stupidity of that statement, he said, I just can't even be friends with you anymore. I said – Jesus. I said, here's the thing um, – I said, over the course of COVID, I've called you maybe five or six times to say, right. I miss seeing you at the comedy store. Right. I miss hanging out. I miss catching up with you. It's Roy Wood. I, no, no, no. Damn no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking about is the and people I, could be. And I, um, I said, I, I, you know, so you can say that to me, and that's fine. I don't have any ill will towards you, but I know this. You may think I have certain beliefs, but I've been a damn good friend to you. I've Beautiful. been a great friend to you for years. And if you're willing to lose a friend over the fact that I didn't vote for your guy, yeah. Yeah. it's like, then fine. Yeah, so that's be it. stupid because it's political. Now, I'm not yeah. friends with you anymore because you're a Yankee fan. And that's normal. <laughs> that's a reasonable that thing. That makes tons of yeah. sense. At least that means something to me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. No, who is it? God, you got to tell us. It's so interesting when people do that. I could tell you off the air, and then you could say it on no, the air. No, but then what's want. the difference? I'd rather hear from you. I'll, I'll give you his initials. Okay, I'll guess that. Neil Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> I love Neil. Neil's hilarious. How is Neil? I know. How wow, is he Neil? got that fired up. Oh, hold on, though, because Neil. Neil, Neil made a career with Chappelle as a guy who totally kicked the can out from under everything. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so say any protests are one way or the other. This guy should be for all of it. Yeah. Like, he's not a system guy, or at least he wasn't. No, look, look, he's also somebody who pops in on The Daily Show quite often, you That's know, true. to pontificate and go down that rabbit hole. And uh, Well, he can have his beliefs, but the bottom line is, like, he has to also realize that this is not a – we're not in a linear thing with one person's thoughts being the only ones that matter. Yeah, it was, it was a bummer, but here's the thing. Like, That's I know for a fact if I'm at the comedy store tomorrow and Neil and I are in the hallway before our sets – I know he'd be the first to walk over and give me a hug. Okay. We just haven't seen each other since it all went down. I, I don't like to air these things right. publicly, you know, because I like to- she did a great job, it. though. Yeah. <laughs> a great job holding back on that. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> can't wait for when That's he comes back. That's my olive branch, okay? Well, I would just like to- Neil's here right now if you yeah. guys want to help out. Neil, come on out. <laughs> he Jerry. Said, yeah, yeah. Jerry. And he's in a- <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, there's nothing wrong with that because it's, you know, and he's not wrong either. Because well, it's his thought. But that's the thing. Like, I respect his beliefs. Right. And even when he was talking to me about the justification of BLM, I was like, okay, I understand that. Like, I get it. I, I totally understand your perspective. And there are things that I certainly, you know, that he'll say that I'll be like, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I, I totally get that. I think that there is just an absolute door shut, padlock it, zero tolerance to thinking yeah. Anything else from this perspective, right. from my perspective. You know? Stay in your, your and bubble. I, I hate to say this, but I'll, I'll say it. As a comic, I find that more often than not, when you go into more progressive-leaning cities, like yeah. San Francisco, Los right. Angeles, there is less of a tolerance to hear a perspective uh, from oh, the yeah. other side as Which opposed defeats to comedy. going to – Yes. Yeah. Like you could go into Houston and dump on Trump for 30 minutes. And if it's still funny, They'll laugh. they're going to laugh. They might bother you afterwards. Yeah, but even still, I've had yeah. people after shows going, going. You know, he's my guy, but that was that was really funny. Right, it was. Really can funny. laugh at him, which right. is great. Yeah, the, the echo chamber can kind of have a moment. Yeah, Neil and I will get an organic kale smoothie and have some tofu and have some laughs over this at some point. <laughs> Step yeah. over some homeless on the way <laughs> yeah. back to the hotel. Yeah, yeah, and say yeah, everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. fine. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for mental health issues, there would be no comedy, and that's going to be a new thing. That I think this is going to be bigger than oh, than I we think it is. It's totally gonna, agree. It's going to become a new caveat, a new excuse. But I think that, you know, I, I think it makes us go back and appreciate those. Like, like uh, Jim Kelly should be like, 
Good <laughs> like God. The face of mental awareness. Uh, that guy went to four Super Bowls and lost consecutively. All of them. Meanwhile, his kids, uh, his son Hunter, had some disease no one had heard of. And the yep. guy's got to deal with that in his personal life and then still managed to be and one he of the overcame. best quarterbacks. He oh, did, yeah. What was it? Throat cancer? Throat, yeah, I think it was. Jaw throat and throat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mouth. Because he mean, chewed too much. If anybody had an excuse to go, you know, I'm not feeling it today. Yeah. I get the twist. Is It'd be him. The twisties. <laughs> Sounds it's cute, such an right? adorable thing to quit yeah. the Olympics over. Yeah, I find that to be, yeah, I don't like the excuse side. I think that's so true. And I think it's going to become a crutch. Especially when you're there because that's what it's about. Well, it's yeah. overcoming the pressure. Everybody's that's under pressure. That's what separates yeah. the legends from us. Yep. It's that one shining well, moment. <laughs> from us. Yeah, we're, we're just, well. Don't lump me in that. Oh, you mean Brady. He looks yeah. like a cubicle worker, but we look like we could have played somewhere. We could have. Yeah, yeah, people might confuse us. Were you Jay Buhner? That one day? I'm like, yeah, I was Jay Buhner. Brady's this guy like, doesn't have the twisties. Weren't you the girl? No. That, yeah. No. Uh, uh, I eat the churros. Yeah. 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 The Twizzlers is what you get a case of. Yeah. I got people Twizzlers. confuse you for maybe like, weren't you a great golfer or something like that at one point? Maybe people know. Yeah. I, I, I wore the Reebok pumps. I was Michael Chang. <laughs> weren't you? Mean, you were on tennis. You were a mathlete, weren't yeah. you? I was a mathlete. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I was the uh, probably, but that was really B champ. <laughs> <laughs> Brady people walk up to him and say, "Weren't you the girl that wallpaper and Willy Wonka?" And like, oh, <laughs> son, of a bitch. son of a bitch. What else is going on here? Well, COVID treated you okay. We're done. My, my prediction is you're the second to last act that goes, uh, and then we're shutting her down again. You think so? I think it's gonna. I think we're gonna start hearing crazy soon again. Win. I think what's gonna I, because L.A. County. Just went to mask mandates. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna come into flu season. Yep, and uh, that's the one thing I, I wonder. I was like, is it gonna come back? Are yeah. we gonna go into at least seating capacities? But do you foresee oh. a potential shutdown? Yeah, I think the think over. So? Well, I, I've 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 said for uh, after two, Lollapalooza this yeah, weekend. We'll get that out of the way. We'll get that out of the way. <laughs> after the last year, I've been saying this is a dress rehearsal. This one's not so bad. Oh, you think? I think COVID was the was the, can't be was a dress rehearsal. Got... Well, right, but the next one that comes, we're going to fight so hard against anything they say. I think, people and it's going to be, be the real one. It's going to be the big one. And what what we need in this don't planet? Know which is true. tweet this, I mean, tweet this, because yeah. what we need in this planet is about two billion off. And I think the Earth is going to shake. There's, she's shaking. <laughs> I do that. Like done. Yeah, I know. I'm done. <laughs> shake us off like fleas. Mother Nature doesn't lose. We're yeah. fleas. A flat the, death tax, fifteen yeah. percent across yeah, the board. Every I think two billion getting off is fair. Two billion. We sustain about five billion. We can do that. We got about seven and a half right now. We need a two billion, and this thing's coming to get us. Well, that's uh, it's like it's India, in China, right. right? Well, we that's... can't. Well, we, that's called genocide. I don't want to eliminate one. <laughs> you see, you're right, different. Now I got to go to the Holocaust Museum after this. <laughs> Guys, take I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. It was just the thick of the moment. Right. <laughs> it just I blame it. Anthony Rizzo. <laughs> he was in a mood. Yeah. No, I'm just saying it. But like you the, really think we're going to shut down again, though? I think we're going to try, and I think I think they're going to try. The, the, the masses, gonna... the masses will fight immediately. And this, the 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 first one wasn't so bad. We could have just cooperated with each other and been all right because it's really kind of just a bad flu. Right. We could let's just do what they say. Keep the hospitals clean. This next one is going to be the one that goes. No, nah, this one actually gets you. And people are like, I'm not doing anything. They say this for and maybe the only reason that it could, because you know, for a lot of places, the way we rebounded mm-hmm. after being shut down economically right. was a lot quicker than right. they anticipated. It was so wildly like, look, inconvenient. We could do this again, yeah. maybe. That you miss me? Yeah. yeah, you're gonna need me back, everybody. Um, <laughs> Why he's campaigning? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. He's still president in some places. In his yeah, party. I yeah. think it's it's crazy that the social media outlets. Like, got, like tal- the Taliban's on Twitter. Yeah. And they got yeah, he's Trump. not allowed. Trump like, can't talk. I think that, look, as a comic, and I've had this debate with many of my comedian friends. I'm like, look, I don't care what you th- think or say, but it's ju- it's still wrong that they kicked this guy yeah. off. It, it's wrong that they kicked him off social media. And, and, and I, I don't know. I, I got I got big issues with that. And there's a lot Huge. of comments like, no, he deserved it. It's like no. you're, you're, you're forgetting the principle of this. You're thinking about the man. I understand you don't agree with his ideology, whatever it might be. There's the brashness or yep. whatever. But you, you still. The Klan has a right to speak. In this country, all these other organizations it's, that's, it's that awful. you're talking about. It's awful. But it's, yes. it's and that's what, why I'm here today. To that's my exactly. actual appearance. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to. You got the cross all ready to go. Yeah. We got some uh, petrol in the back of the car. But man, did I find no, a nice piece I, of wood. I, I hate that. I hate some of the things that people have to say, but they have a right to say it. When they act, yes. that's different. 
And again, it's like there's always this fall outrage, yeah. right, in the media. Oh, my God, the Klan's coming to New York City. Right. It's like why are you giving it any gravity? Because yeah. we all know in New York City when the Klan came, there was maybe 30 people marching down the street. Yeah. Right. There were like 2,000 yeah. on the sides. Like, guys, that's the point. We, we won. Right. Like, visually, just look at the optics. We won. It, it's yeah. fine. Stop giving it fuel. You know? Well, I've been against the civil rights movement because I think it identifies racists faster. It made it illegal to be racist. But without it, you could find that says, I don't want this, this, or this in my business. And then right. you're like, now we know. Now we know. So That's there is, right. there's, yeah. I, I think everybody should, I don't think there should be any like ramifications on what people well, say. Well, race is a whole bucket of work. I mean, now you've got critical animal. race theory. And I think critical race theory should be taught in schools because there are benefits to it. I, I think that it, it, it's the quickest way for grade schoolers to learn division. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom! Again, a math joke. Ladies and gentlemen, on, that's, that's just that's uh, that's what we call the pink spoon <laughs> in the biz. It's called a little taste, a little sample, a little hit. You want the Sunday? There's 31 other flavors here. Want the yayo? <laughs> so let me just guess. During his critical race uh, theory talk, an Asian made a math joke. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? This is what I have to close I with? I can't disappoint. <laughs> you don't. I'm not here to disappoint. It's always good talking to you. We, did, we went on for like two hours on Caliendo's podcast that one time. It's just great. It's fun that was talk. fun. Yeah. So uh, it's always good to have you. You've been doing this for a long time. So. The happiest man on the, pl- on the planet. Frank? Frank? Oh, yeah. without yeah. question. Sunshine. There's nothing about that guy. That's... Look, my internet word is not Frank Caliendo is difficult because I'm, uh, I'm honest about it. It's a, it's, a, it's a joke, right? No, it's always at his house. Frank Caliendo is difficult as the internet password if you're Is it really? Yeah, I made it that. Because <laughs> every, everything's a hassle. I, I mean, literally one of the flawlessly entertaining yeah. guys and so gifted and so talented. Just one of those guys that God just went, bink. Just touched and yeah. it's like and it made his face fat. <laughs> when God touched him, it made his face bigger. <laughs> skinny fat. He's well, he's got the skinny body, and then they play. He's like one of those uh, books that had three pages, and you turn and make different things out of it. Yeah, he, his face is wrong. It's not right for the he, he head. It, that giant head of his. Yeah, he's Massive. got like a. Uh, well, he's got like the body of a real of a, like a, a state champion wrestler, mm-hmm. but then the face of a, a truck driver. You know, it's like. <laughs> You should always be holding a Slim Jim and yeah. a... And a oh, or, uh, as I've said, uh, the face of a man with a peanut allergy, and the body has not yet <laughs> reacted. <laughs> Wait until he swallows. The old man, when the whole thing, when, the, when it gets in the bloodstream face, forget it. It's over. Uh, well, it's good bashing on uh, Frank, because he's uh, easy to attack, and there are no groups that are going to defend him. Yeah. So well, just, I, I love him. Yeah, I do too. I really do love the guy. He's the best. But, uh... Uh, but yeah, it was fun. So it's always good <laughs> yeah. to talk to you. Steve's always got something good to say. Steve Byrne uh, at uh, Desert Ridge. And if you want somebody who's unafraid and going to go up on stage and do the show and not worry about, you know, comments from But it's still, it's still like having fun. It's not it's like, fun. it's not like, I'm going to be dangerous. Well, you know, you're it's not, like, yeah. I'm not like Carlos Mencia, like, I'm going to say the things nobody says, bro. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm just like stating an opinion that's like middle. I, I'm like literally. <laughs> I have a middle centrist yeah. viewpoint yep. where I dump on both sides. Yeah, the best part about that again, I have to I have to comment as the guy as the post uh, post game interview. Uh, the man who said I'm not dangerous attacked a man while he told us he wasn't dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he went after Carlos Mencia. Well, Carlos and Neil Brennan dangerous. can start a bowling team together. <laughs> Is that what you're driving towards? <laughs> I love Neil, though. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. He's hard not to love Neil. Let's just clarify. Let's just that up. Carlos. Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> really? Not a fan of Carlos Mencia? I don't have anything against I, I Well, just you think, just said you didn't like him. Well, we all know the knock against him, yeah. but when we were at the comedy store, and he was coming through, and he was the the guy beating his chest, and he yeah. was the, the big star then, like, you would literally be in the middle of a set, and other comics would be like, hey, 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 He's here. from the back of the room. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, then you knew. I've heard it. Ears and start doing crowd work. Zip it Where up, are you from? How you doing? Give it up for the single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sober for six years. It's like that's what all those lines come out. You know? <laughs> wow. I see, and he's always been nice to us when he comes here, and never, and people say that, but the, I mean, the knock is there for a reason, evidently. It's still yeah. a chip. I mean, for, oh, it's, I mean, for, it's, there. it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's an albatross. He he's not gotten rid of. Yeah. He's not rebounded from no. it, and. I think he's funny. Like when he's in here, he's funny. I just don't. I, I don't know. It's not my world. Yeah. Well, it's so, mine. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, now, you know, maybe he'll get traded. <laughs> That's the only way it'll work. Right, get traded yeah. to another comedy club. Uh, Steve Byrne at Desert Ridge this weekend. Leave us with words of wisdom quickly. Well, um, <laughs> I'm not Frank Caliendo. I try to do my best, but uh, no, I, I just would say that. Look, this summer's been tumultuous. Yep. It's been a crazy year. I would I would highly recommend coming out to CB Live, 
to have a great time because yep. I'm one of the few comics that I, I'm telling you I care. I genuinely Aww. care about the shows, oh. and I want everybody to have a great time. And I'm gearing up to film my fifth hour special, and I'm, it's the hardest I've ever worked on one. So well, there you I'm go. really, really excited Beautiful. about it. Well, yeah. All the success in the world. You deserve. And I'm, I'm selling I, – I don't – normally comics sell merch after the show. Yeah. Like I'm selling uh, Rizzo shirts that, with the new Yankee <laughs> oh, thing. Gosh, I, that's my merch. Pre-order now. Yankee yeah. gear. Yeah. With Rizzo and like Sharpie <laughs> written on the back of Reggie Jackson jersey. Yeah. I'm sponsored by the Yes Network, by the way. Too. Oh, are you? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Tell Michael I said hi. <laughs> All right, there you go. Steve Burns at Ridge this weekend. It's 98 KUPD. Hey, it's not weird. It's pretty cool, actually. No membership fee. I have heard enough of this. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet Mesquite. Repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.